Creating your own colour schemes, regiments, chapters, in my own personal experience, is one of the most enjoyable aspects of the hobby. But where do you start? I mean, literally, you can do what you want, but if you want your chapter or your homebrew regiment to feel a little bit more appropriate to the law setting, then there are a few things to consider. So when creating said colour scheme, I mean, wh where do you start? Do you start with the name or do you start with the colour scheme? Or do you do both? Are they kind of intrinsically intertwined together? Well, from experience, when I worked at Workshop, it was all three. It depended on the project. So the Ventrilli Nobles, for instance, was a kit bash and a colour scheme. And then the name and the law came later. The Lords of Iron Thorn was a name. And then I made a colour scheme based on that. And then the Nilac Dynasty was a bit of both. It was kind of like a bit of to and fro between the two. So there is no right and wrong way, I think. However, with this particular one, it's definitely going to be colour scheme first. So for our chapter, for our Leviathan box set, we're going to go with the lovely and beautiful colour choices of the painting phase logo. White, black and orange. But for yourself, how do you go about doing that? How do you, how do you pick the colours? What, what's the right colours to use? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. The easiest one, and it's something Pat observed, is you could just go on the website, uh, look at Citadel Miniatures, how they're painted, and then just flip the colour scheme. So Ultramines, for instance, you could paint the majority of them gold and then do flashes of blue instead of the other way around. Um, but a big rule of thumb when doing anything colour wheel based, when you're picking colours from the colour wheel, you have primary colours, secondary colours, tertiary colours, and all this, that, and there's loads to do, and you can check YouTube videos about how this all works. But a real basic rule is whatever colour you pick, the complementary colour is on the opposite side of the colour wheel. And usually depending on the gradient of tone, whether it's like really dark or mid or quite pastely, wherever you pick that on one side, try and aim for a similar level on the other side and that should give you a nice complementary colour. So let's say you chose ultramarine blue as your tone. That's nice and in the blue spectrum and smack in the middle. So on the opposite side, you kind of want an orange that's kind of in that vein as well, because the opposite on the colour wheel to blue is orange. That's the complementary colour. So you probably want something like Troll Slayer Orange, Fire Dragon Bright, something like that. So you've picked your colours, you're happy, you've gone for whatever tone, you like your primary colour, and you've picked the thing on the opposite side is your complementary colour. Test models are key here, so that's the, the big thing. You, 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 it's all good. I mean, I've got the experience, years of experience of like using my mind's eye and going, this colour works well with this colour. And that that is literally just from doing so much painting. I know what works and what doesn't work. And sometimes things that shouldn't work on the colour wheel do actually work in real life as well. Um, so test models are key. So do your test model, try it. Maybe like, for instance, when we were testing ours, we thought maybe we should do orange as the main colour or black as the main colour or should it be white as the main colour? So that's something to bear in mind as well. Like which colour looks better is the majority. Now, for those of you are struggling and you don't, you, you're just, the colour wheel is just a massive explosion of colour. And so I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't understand this PG help. Best thing to do, real fundamentals of any kind of colour picking is look at movie reference, look at comics, look at cartoons, and like I said, stuff on the website, because an artist has already worked that out for you. So if there's a colour scheme you like the look of, let's say, I don't know, the Hulk, you know, we know from looking at the Hulk that purple and green work well together. Looking at Captain America or something like that, we know that those star spangled tones look really nice. And then having that flooding across the Marvel Universe with things like Thor and Doctor Strange and stuff like that, they all work. So an artist has done all that hard work for you. So just look at stuff that exists in movies, cartoons, comics, graphic novels, uh, computer games. So what we're going to do, or what I did was look at different ways of balancing that across the model and looking at, as I mentioned earlier, will black armor work, will orange armor work, will white armor work? Going to settle on white, decided that, and we've got orange flashes on there and black being sort of like the subtle color that kind of like is Imperial Eagles, is like the gun casing, the bits in the, the ribbly bits in the middle of the armor joints, stuff like that. So I'm settled on how that's going to look. The markings themselves, like keeping it law based and trying to make it feel codex compliant almost we'll come to that in a bit so naming is the tricky part and this applies to any kind of like homebrew collection color scheme regimen whatever you want to avoid the space with space face or the mr blobbing marines because it just sounds a bit naff it's fun as a joke and a bit of a meme but if you want to feel like it's like set in the law and is appropriate to the universe that you're working with then you want it to feel right so you've got like nouns and adjectives we often used to call them thing doers uh so they're, they're doing a thing thing doers or doer things because sometimes the way the names actually work um is actually the opposite way around so like angels of absolution 
lines of terror. It's a thing and a thing. You know, they're a thing thing. Lines of terror. They're a thing thing. Angels of absolution. They're a thing doer. Um, so you kind of want to go down that name of convention. And initially it was like, oh, they're the angels of immolation. We've got a flame design. We've got a flame design. We've got a flamer with flame coming from the brush tip. So it feels like it should have something flamey involved in there. And the space marines, angels of death, angels of immolation, maybe. Bernie stuff. The name will come in time. So you've got a scheme. You've got a name. You now need to give them a bit of background, a bit of lore. Uh, for hours, uh, we're going to be keep it simple. There is a bit of a jokiness there. So I personally, in my head, I'm going to set them in the galaxy near the rest of my collections. So I've got like my jeans to the court. I've got my Argent Shroud. I've got my other stuff, which is like my Fire Lord Marine. So I'm going to keep them in that area, that that sector of the galaxy. Um, the battle cry is going to be for the algorithm, because we always say that, because that sounds fun. Sounds a bit jokey. But actually, the algorithm could be an STC. It could be something that they're searching for. So actually, using that as like a little bit of a joke that initially that we were banding around, the algorithm could be something that is a piece of tech that they're actually looking to find or use or is something that's very important to this chapter. And as a rule of that, we're like, maybe they should be successors from the Iron Hands because they're very much into the tech, work quite close with the Admech. So maybe the algorithm is some STC or elements of an STC that maybe helps power or do something with the Golden Throne. So there's all these things that you can start peeling away and like scratching away. So that I think that's the key thing is sometimes you just get a name or like a bit of an idea, work with that, add more to it, flesh it out. So law can be quite just as important as the colour scheme and the name itself as well. So even though it was a joke for the algorithm, there's actually a lot to be used in there. There's no shame in retirement, Chapter Master. You've led a distinguished career. It's time to go. But I feel fine. And won't it take ages for me to be replaced? <laughs> Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, Captain Wayland Gaines, got here at warp speed because Wayland Games offer free shipping on orders over 20 pounds. Even duties paid to Europe. I was bought for up to 20% off and I'm so damn loyal. For every one pound you spend, you earn points to make things even cheaper. But what have you ever done, Waylon Gaines? I have a 4.9 star rating on Trustpilot and I once killed 42 orcs with a knife before pulling it out of the scabbard. And if you want to be as badass as me, click the link in the description now. Oh uh, yeah. So from a white undercoat, so any white's going to be fine here, uh, we're going to be start by picking out all the black details with Black Legion. Again, this is like weapons, the ribbly bits in the undersuits. Don't worry about splodges here because we can literally fix that once we've applied all the base coats. So a quick note on the Lieutenant in Phobos armor. After spraying this dude white, I had the idea that him and his buds could be a bit more spec ops. So I changed my mind and coated him over with some thinned down black legion instead of spraying him black. Because uh, if I sprayed him black, it'll clog up all the details. So I've just used a couple of coats of black legion here. Now, if I was gonna add more Phobos units, then I probably will spray them black. But for now, I'm just gonna use some thinned down black legion instead. And I'm going to give me a quick dry brush over with some ash grey as well. So it's more of a charcoal grey as opposed to like a, a deep black. So I'm going to apply deep orange to all the bits I want orange. So that's the trim, the helmets. Now take your time. I'll also pick out some knee bits here as well. And if you make any mistakes, we can tidy it back up at the end with white, or if you want to do it as you go in, then you can always pick out those details and tidy up as you go. For example, as well, there's some tricky bits on the Terminator's rebreather. I've got some orange on the black bits I'd already painted, so just recorrect that if you wanted to at this point. It just makes it a lot easier. 
Any brown leather details? I'm going to pick out with brown leather. For the cream and parchment and the bone or chitin, I'm going to pick them all out with the same base coat to start off with, and that's going to be grimy grey. So just work your way around, maybe a couple of coats here and there. For silver details, mostly on the weapons, we're going to use oily steel. And then any gold details, we're going to use bronze. It's just a nice toned down gold tone. I know it says bronze, but I call it gold. Now, any red details across the model, I'm going to be using dirty red. This is mostly for wax seals, but on the commander, or the, the captain in Terminator armor, I'm going to use that for his cloak as well. And again, on the cloak, because you've got a white undercoat, you're probably going to need to do a couple of coats of this. So what I'm going to do now is add some definition to the white and the orange, make it a bit dirty, and I'm going to apply some thinned down sole black grey. This is going to be a 50-50 mix with water, you can use medium if you want to. Also going to apply this to the robes and parchment because it will add a little bit of depth in those recesses when it comes to the next step when we apply some seraphim sepia. Which is what I'm going to do now. So adding in some extra like unit types can be quite tricky, like librarians, tech marines, pretty straightforward, going to be blue, going to be red. Apothecary, they have white. So how do I denote them a little bit different from the rest of the rank and file guys that are white? Well, what I did was I used Seraphim Sepia and thinned that down and painted that over the armor. And then that kind of, even though I've got the robes, which is like a cream tone because I've used grimy gray for the robes, it still set it different from the armor. So apothecaries, there's not going to be many of them, but they're going to have more of a bone ivory kind of scheme as opposed to white. So that does set them apart slightly on the battlefield. And then the Phobos guys, we talked about them being black, black ops. The orange tones, I don't want them to be super vibrant, so I did a coat, and because of that black undercoat, it made it a bit more subdued, so it kind of felt a little bit more sort of spec ops, like it's it's darkened down a tad. So when it comes to like markings on the Phobos stuff, they're all gonna get black armor, but their orange is gonna just be a little bit more subtle. Uh, and again, that was more stuff that was happening as I was painting. This wasn't stuff I always planned at the start. A lot of this happened as an organic process. So like the Phobos Marine, changing that from white undercoat to black was an organic process. Adding those orange flashes onto it was an organic process as well. So you will find that as you are making your color schemes, things will change, will tweak, which is why test models are important. Then for any weaponry, golds and browns, I'm just gonna get some Norn Oil and coat that over. Then I'm gonna pick out the skin with some cork. Again, a couple of coats if you need to. Then for some definition, I'm going to get some thinned deep shade, and this one's called human skin, and it just gives it a nice ruddy skin effect. I'm going to have to thin this down as well because it's quite neat from the pot and gives a bit of quite of a pinky hue, which is quite nice, but yep, yeah, thin down, very nice. Then for any glowies, um, hopefully you pick them out in white. If not, pick them out in white now, and then get some striking scorpion green and apply that over the glowies. That's the eyes, any sort of like consoles on the wrists and stuff. So we've got our Space Marines up to a certain point now. They're what I'd refer to as tabletop ready. Um, you can base them, you can begin playing games with them. So if you are following along and want to do the same scheme, leave them at that if you don't want to add any more details. But if you do want to add a bit more love, whether this is to the sergeants, the captains, or just everything, we're going to do some next steps now, which is just some highlights, some tidying up, and a little bit of bow damage and weathering as well. So the first thing we're going to do is add a bit more pop to that orange, and we're just going to tidy back up those raised areas, just in case it's a bit splodgy, it looks a bit mottled, and we're just going to use some deep orange again for that. We're going to layer the skin with cork, but I'm also going to use cork to highlight the leather as well. So I'm just going to get a nice little edge highlight on the edges of that leather, just to make it look a bit scuffy and a bit worn. Then I'm going to highlight the skin using some radiant skin. And I'm also going to use this to highlight the orange as well. So it's going to give that orange, even though it's a skin tone, it just gives that orange a little bit more pop.
then it's tidying back up the robes and the parchment with grimy grey. For the robes, it's more of a layer on those raised folds. For the parchment, I'm just like picking out the edges and just doing like some little horizontal stripes on the actual purity seals, just to make it look like text. So you don't have to sit there trying to like write words. Now our cloak looks a bit messy at this point, so we're just going to relayer that red with some dirty red. So that's keeping it up to the raised areas uh, and then leaving those dark tones in the deeper recesses. And then we're going to highlight with blood red. So you're just looking at getting a nice sort of like decent edge across all your folds and cloth and stuff like that. So don't go too mad, just get some blood red. And if they do get a bit thick and wibbly wobbly, just go back in and cut in with some dirty red. Then to finish the cloak off, we're just going to highlight using deep orange and that's just going to add a bit more definition to those raised areas. And again, if you're not happy with it, you can always cut back in with some of the previous reds. Then lightly sponge on any white for chipping. So you can sponge it. I'm actually just going to use a brush here because I've got a lot of colours on there. If you've got like tanks or bigger vehicles, you can do it there. But for this, I'm just going to get a brush, quite neat, and then just do a couple little bit of white chipping on the marking. So that's on the orange. Uh, pick out some bits on the white because that soul black grey would have knocked it back a little bit. So you get a bit more definition there as well. Then I'm going to do some chipping with some ash grey and that's going to again going to be on the orange and the white as well just to make it look a bit battered and worn and again if you want to sponge it on you're welcome to do so now just to keep the paint count down what I'm going to do here is get some ash grey and some white do a 50 50 mix I'm going to highlight any black details so if I go to the Phobos armor I'm just going to start picking out the edges of that and also any casings or like any random bits on shoulder pads it just saves getting another grey out I've already got it on the wet palette so I'm just going to mix the two together so the troops done we're now going to move on to vehicle size stuff so we've got the dreadnought in the set usually with videos I would say like you, you it's similar colors but you change your approach there's a bit more dry brushing involved a lot of this is going to be similar methods and techniques. The only difference is I'm going to do a bit more sponging, a bit more sort of like careless with like my washing. I'm not going to worry so much because that adds to the weathering. So the colours are the same, some of the approaches are the same, but you'll notice with the scale of it, I can be a little bit more freeform about how I apply it. So again, we're starting with a white scar on the coat and I was in two minds to spray it silver. But actually white scar makes sense because it's actually harder to paint white over silver. So what I'm going to do now is get some polished silver. This is a speed paint metal and it's perfectly thinned down for what I need. So I'm just going to coat anything that I want metallic with this. And it will show through some of the white and it will go into the recesses like you expect a shade and a contrast to do. So it's going to be perfect for that. Then I'm going to get some Norn Oil and reapply that over that polished silver. And that's going to add more depth into the recesses. And at this point, if you want to, you can do some edged highlighting or some dry brush on those metals. But I chose not to. Now initially I was going to go black over white, didn't like it, so I'm going to get ash grey and then use that for my black marking so it's a bit more faded. So I'm going to do a couple of coats of ash grey over there, any areas I want black. And then deep orange is going to be used for any orange markings. I know I wanted some orange on the knees, dead simple, but I wasn't quite sure where I was going to put the orange on the actual upper part of the body. And in the end, I settled on doing a nice stripe down the middle. And I just used the rivets and some panels on the actual centre bit and the sarcophagus to help give me that sort of nice stripe down the middle. Again, always look for things like that to, to help you along the way. Then I got some white just to chip up the orange markings a bit, make them feel a bit more scuffed. And I applied soul black grey over those areas, so over the white and the orange, again, to tie in with the rest of the troops and make it feel a bit more worn and battered. Then it was a simple matter of getting some ash grey and then a sponge and then just applying chipping. For the most part, I used that, but then in some smaller areas I couldn't quite get to, just got a brush and added a few in there as well. And on the grey areas or the ash grey armour panels, I just use that mix of ash grey and white again and just picked around the edges. And again, you can always sponge it on. So I've got the predominant colours on the models now. I'm happy with them. Now there's a there's the marking side of it, the sort of identification and fitting them in to the codex. I, I want these to be codex compliant, so they follow the majority of how the codexes work for those that adhere to the codex. Now, 
they've got orange on the shoulder trims. That is not one of the companies. That is because I want that color on there. So normally if you look at like Space Marine chapters and stuff like that, they have different ways of showing how to do companies. For this particular scheme of ours, instead of doing the shoulder trims like the Ultramarines would, uh, we're doing it on the knee pad into the left knee pad. Now we're doing a little stripe, a little white stripe on there. That represents the first company, first company being white. So I'm doing a little white stripe. But if you're making your own or you, you're using this color scheme, you just paint the whole knee round all part white. You don't have to do a strip. I just do a strip because I think it looks nice against the orange. So that is where our markings go. Sometimes it could be the chest eagle. Sometimes it could be the trim. Sometimes it could be another element, but I went for the left knee. Then it's about picking the helmet schemes. So orange is like our spot color. And the spot color for the first company for Ultramarines, I, I used Ultramarines a lot when I was like coming up with this. So first company has the white trims because it's first company and then they have white helmets so i wanted to kind of mimic something along those lines so our guys have got orange trims so our first company guys are going to have orange helmets i know the first company's white ignore that i just like that color scheme of orange to offset give a nice little triad uh, on the actual scheme as well so orange helmets is for first company sergeants get black helmets so across the rest of the rank and file stuff in other uh, companies and stuff they get black helmets sergeants get black instead of red like ultra they get black now, how do you denote a veteran sergeant? Well, you give them a white stripe because it's first company. They get the white stripe on the red helmet. So for ours, the uh, the helmet is going to be orange. It gets a black stripe down it instead. So that's what we're doing. We give the veteran sergeant a nice black stripe down that orange helmet. Quite simple. Keeps that black, orange and white vibe going. And it's, it's a little bit out of the compliance a little bit, but it fits, it fits with the scheme. And that's the important bit here is you can make like little tweaks here and there that fits with the color scheme. Cause at the end of the day, the color scheme is key. And then the law can work around that. That's usually how I find it. So we've now sorted out our color scheme. I know what I'm doing with everything. I've kind of future proofed it, which I'll come to in a minute. Um, but the decal freehanding, that's the thing I want. I want a symbol. I want a symbol for this chapter and out there, there's not enough or appropriate iconography or decals that work for me. So I'm going to freehand these. I'm not going to do loads, but I've opted for a flame and a skull in it. The skull could be a decal. There's plenty of skull decals out there, but there can be a flame and a decal. The flame fits with the iconography of the painting face, the flamer, uh, and the skull. Who doesn't like skulls? It's a space marine. They love skulls. So a lot of that's going to be freehanded. And then, of course, you've got the other markings on the other side, depending on what they are. Troops, fast attack, heavy support first company veteran stuff i'll probably freehand those as well because it's orange over black um but that's that's choice i like doing that that's the thing i enjoy doing um the other thing to bear in mind is the future proofing of stuff so when you are painting schemes or come up with ideas make make sure there's room for like expansion or other stuff or like extra units or extra regiments or extra sort of characters that might appear it's always worth having like a few things in mind like if things get added or if things get removed it's worth having a plan for that it's not the end of the world i'm not saying you should do that it's just something i like to consider like if i want to expand the collection or do more with it it's worth giving yourself some room for that as well when it comes to choice background color schemes don't this is a big sort of like disclaimer don't go there's 50 space marines in this army there only ever will be and then you get you really enjoy painting them you've made your law saying it's 50 uh you've done all this like special markings and then more cool stuff comes down you're like oh I wanted to be 100 now uh, so don't restrict yourself that, that's a key thing i've seen it so many times where people restrict themselves and go but i've i've written it now i've written my own law it's law now there can only be 50. don't do that it's a terrible idea now before we scoot off and go i did say i'm going to tell you what the name of the chapter is the name of the chapter we had a few thrown out on twitch there was the light of the emperor the emperor's light and angels of the emperor in the end we settled on angels of immolation because they're angels of death and they like burning stuff Oh, and by the way, by the way, the planet from the planet Phasor, the planet Phasor. I don't know why. It's just because it works with the name right. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to the like and subscribe. And also, if you've done your own homebrew chapters and color schemes or you just want a bit more information, you've got some thoughts, chuck them in the comments. If you don't like making up your own homebrew, then chuck them in the comments. If you hate me, chuck it in the comments. Don't care. But thanks to our patrons. Thank you. As always, you, the support means a lot. You keep this all going and you get us, you know, we, we can make mad videos about making up our own color schemes and chapters based on Pat's beautiful logo, which is amazing. Uh, so thank you and I'll see you soon.